this session we covered the topic on system identification of first order plus time delay model now if we look at the first look at the first principle approach in this approach we write down all this model equation to finally come up with a transfer function model of this type. We say that this tau k and theta, these are the parameter set of the model. Now in the first principle approach from this model, what do you get? We get a, so for a given input, we get an prediction of the output. Because for this case, we know the k tau and theta, we can have a prediction of the output and this is what is the solution form where we know that for the first order process, this is our k y t equals k m 1 minus negative theta, theta over tau okay now what is the use of this parameter sets or the prediction is that use can be the parameters to design controller or also the predictions can be used. Now in contrast to that approach of first principles in the system identification approach is If we have a set of data, so this is our data from maybe an experiment from test. The system identification approach, the question is asked whether if you have a set of data, what are the parameters? So look at this, in the first principle approach, we got this model from the knowledge of the process. And again, this k, tau and theta values are nothing but some sort of parameters in the process itself. It can function of some say area, uh, bulb resistance or all of these different terms. We get these parameters k, tau and theta and then use those to make some predictions. Or directly use those to design controller now if you have if you do not have those first order knowledge or the model you obtain from the first order process is complicated then what about this approach that we have some data and from the data can we get these parameters that's the system identification approach now we'll look at for first order plus time delay model so we'll look at a couple of approaches so one technique will be using what is called this 63.2 percent approach okay now what this approach says is that if you look at this solution of the model here we'll have yt Now, if say for so t is nothing but some time here, uh, 
and uh, we can get the y value for any value of t. So when t minus theta becomes tau, we have y, meaning that we have t equals theta plus tau, y will be km, t minus theta equals tau, so it will be, sorry, this is negative, and the value of this is 0 0.368, so it will give us 0 0.632 km. So what it simply says that at t equals theta plus tau, the y will reach this 0 0.632 km means 63.2 percent of this km. Okay. Now let's look at we if we have a data set and we plot the data. Suppose we end up getting. Have the input and we have the output. <clears throat> now, what will you will get? This data is will have some say some sort of say time stamps. So this is say 9.10, this is 915, and all of this are different time stamps. To say 945. Okay. So initial to start with, what you can do, you can just take this time to be 0. So your scale, time scale, you can say this is my time 0. So this will be what my time 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 20, 25, and 30. So that's your time scale. So before that, we are not considering anything before. We made the change in the input. Okay. Now, how to apply this approach? First, let's look at this. What is the value of this? Suppose this was initially 10 and this was suppose 15. So, this is your UT. Okay. And suppose this is a flow rate. So, the unit can be say feet cube per minute. Okay, suppose your y value is the what is called this temperature. So suppose this was initial at 300 degrees centigrade and finally we suppose 350 degrees centigrade. Okay. Now from our definition we know that this value, this is our m, the change in the input. And the next change in the output is our k m because when t goes to infinity this becomes zero so it becomes k m okay now remember that the system fiction approach the objective is to find the values of k tau and theta okay now to get k first to get k we have m equals say u t at infinity minus u t at 0, which is 15 feet cube per minute okay. and then what do you have came? Came is nothing but y t infinity minus y so we have 350 now we'll have our k to be km over m which is 50 degree centigrade over 5 feet cube per minute 10 degree centigrade per feet cube per minute. So we got our first parameter k. Okay. Now to get theta, theta the time delay, we say the time delay is defined as when you make a change in the input, 
and when the output is start to change. Suppose you make in the input at zero, so we look at this axis. If this value is a suppose four, so from directly here you get theta equals four mini. So theta equals four mini. You directly get it from there. Okay. Now the third parameter you have, we know that for y when t becomes theta plus tau. This becomes 63.2 km. So we know that km equals. <coughs> so from here you see that y will be 0 0.632 and km was 50 degrees centigrade. So this gives us 31.6 degree centigrade so now here you need to note that this yt it's in the in the divisional form so when you're considering this 31.6 degrees so it should be from 300 plus 31.6 degrees so you know that now if you look at so 31.6 beyond 300 so 331.6 so if it's somewhere around here you just look at that point there and then if you find the time so this for this case suppose this is nine minutes so we have theta so with theta being four minutes we get how to be five minutes So tau is really this time that it takes to go from where it starts to this value 63.2 percent of the final value. <coughs> so we have got these three parameters tau, we have got this theta and we have got this k. So now we can use these three parameters to design controller or we can use these parameters to further predict the output for a given input. Suppose now if the input changed from 10 to 15, we had a value from 300 to 50, that's the experimental data. Now to figure out if it goes from so suppose 15 to 20, what will be the temperature? 